Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're going to be working on the Guardian Farm once again. We are into phase two of this build now and hopefully should be able to get it done today. So the next step in this process is to channel the Guardians away from the farm itself. There are a couple of reasons for this. First, because the Guardians would contribute to the mob cap in this area if they were still in the vicinity of the farm. And also so we as players can stand at least 24 blocks away from the farm in order to maximize the spawnable space of guardians. I've got 16 blocks marked out here, and I think I'm probably gonna drop the guardians down there, even though we would be closer to some of these chunks here in the farm that would allow for guardians to spawn. Not that we'll need to AFK for long because the guardians are going to spawn pretty quickly in this place, but even so, we will still be at least 24 blocks away from most of the farm, enabling the guardians to be directed up into here and out. So we're gonna set this up. I've got a bucket of lava on me, so I'm only working with one bucket right now, which is a little bit awkward. Let me grab another water source from here. Fantastic. And that should be okay here. So we can just pop in some water sources on this bit. This flows for eight blocks and then it comes down one level and we do the same thing here. So the guardians are going to be channeled from this eight block wide section here into a four block wide channel which is then going to take them down to the killing mechanism and i've just got these two short water streams here so that any guardians that fall in here are going to just drop straight down into the next water stream to be carried along and believe me they're going to move a little bit faster than the player does so we don't need to worry too much about that we're also going to need to cap off and wall off some of this section here because guardians tend to jump a little bit when they get out of water so if they breach the surface at any point and realize that they're out of water they're going to start flopping around a whole bunch and that's not something we want to happen. Over here, where we've got the drop into the kill mechanism, we are actually going to cap it off quite low to prevent them from jumping over the area where the lava goes. I have been testing this off camera in a creative world and <laughs> the farm is a little bit intense and it's obviously going to be the best thing to do to test it in a creative world because if we put wrong, one step wrong here then this could all go very badly and hours and hours of work will be wasted so it's kind of <laughs> in our best interest to get this right first try. Now I'm going to dig this area down a whole bunch and I think the thing to do would be to make it roughly level with the seafloor because if we can open this out a little bit, it'll be really cool to look at the Guardian spawning space while the Guardians are generating there. So let's take a quick look at the coordinates. Okay, Y32. So we need to be digging down to about Y32. Obviously, there are some sections of this that we will need to clear out a little bit as we go, and there's going to be a massive mountain of gravel to contend with shortly. But aside from that, this should be fairly simple. We're at Y55 right now, so just a bit of straightforward digging to do. There we go, that's now all dug out down to Y32. And the next step is going to be a little bit risky because it involves placing a whole lot of lava. We're gonna be placing some fence gates about here in the hole. I think about, yeah, this, this sort of level should be fine because we wanna have basically three rows of lava sources above this. This is something I actually looked up Cub Fan's video for because it's something that is probably going to be a little bit precise. So we're gonna open up these fence gates so that the guardians can fall through, but above that there's going to be three rows of lava which damage the guardians on the way down, softening them up for a one-hit kill with your sword. Which inevitably means a trip to the nether, because that's, generally speaking, the best source of lava we're going to find. And would you look at that, there's a whole bunch of it here. What a surprise. <laughs> Better check that my elytra isn't broken again. Nope, we're good. Okay, let's grab as much of this as we possibly can. I've cleared out my inventory, so there's plenty of space for lava buckets, and we're not going to accidentally huck one into the lava as we collect this. And the trick to placing this lava is going to be to stay at one level above the fence gates here. Just dig down in a column and place them very carefully one at a time, making sure that you don't end up stepping forward into the lava by mistake. Oh, there we go. Always a little bit nerve-wracking placing those first lava sources, but I think we're going to get used to it. Oh, that felt sketchy. Okay, very nice, very nice. So we have ourselves a lava collection mechanism set up here. That's all just going to pour guardians into there. They're going to get a significant amount of lava damage, and then we will meet them at the bottom down here. Now, I'll probably dig down to that right next door. Digging straight down next to lava. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> but I think we'll be at Y32 soon. We should be long past the lava at this point, actually. So there we go. And then we just dig into there. And that is going to be where the Guardians collect. Ooh, that's a scary sight. <laughs> but something that the Guardians should be able to fall through and then land on a platform here. Now, obviously, we're going to have to block this off from the Guardians escaping here, which we'll do with a few different blocks. We could either put down some slabs or something over the top here 
and we're going to have a pad for them to fall onto right here, which is going to actually be filled with water so that the Guardians don't take lethal fall damage. So there we go, there's a pool for them to drop into and a very, very rudimentary safety bar here so that they're not going to escape through this slab wide gap, but we'll probably be able to hit them pretty easily. And the water is flowing from that back corner, hopefully pushing them into this corner where we can just swipe at them. I'll probably refine this system as I go because I've seen that I've seen this done a lot more sophisticated than this. This is just an initial setup as a proof of concept. Likewise, if this is a place that we're going to come back to often, it's going to be worth decorating and we'll need to put in some sort of collection mechanism for all the drops, of course. So I think some hoppers underneath that crash pad where the guardians will be collecting is probably going to be a good idea and we'll need something to sort all the drops. So some sort of auto sorting system will be in order as well. But I think for the most part, this is going to be all done, which is both a good thing and a bad thing, because the next step is to take out the ocean monument and then fill the bottom of the ocean floor with soul sand and take away the underneath layer of stone right there. And I'm really hoping that this works out okay. Time consuming and uh, ridiculous though it is, I think that probably the safest thing for us to do to make sure that there's going to be solid water sources all the way up to the surface is going to be to flood the temple back in. And much like the area up there, it shouldn't take too long to do that. It's just going to be a case of creating water sources along each of the large walls and the rest of the area should just fill itself in. And it was worth drying this place out just to see it empty, but oh gosh, there's uh, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of guardians spawning in here in a minute. I am kind of hoping that the amount of guardians that have spawned outside will take up the mob cap, so we'll get as few guardians spawning in here as possible. But yeah, I feel like I'm going to get lasered very, very soon. As an experiment, I'm going to try breaking out the walls of the temple and see if any water sources start to reform in here once they're flooding in from the outside. You know, they might do. That might actually save us a little bit of time if I want to mine like this instead of worrying too much about the other thing. So the next thing I want to do is relocate the beacon, either so we have haste 2 in there so that we can mine a little bit faster, or so that we can have the resistance and regeneration effects closer to where a lot of guardians are going to be in just a few seconds. So I'm not entirely sure which one to do. I think what we're going to do is set it up with haste 2, and then if the combination of conduit power and haste 2 doesn't let us instantly mine prismarine, I'm probably just going to set it back to uh, resistance and regeneration, because that's that's going to be better if the Guardians come in, and if we can't instantly mine Prismarine, it's not really going to make a great deal of difference. Of course, to build the beacon directly over the top of this thing seems like the best idea, until you consider that the water streams might carry some of the blocks, including the beacon, down into this lava pit over here. So, you know what? I think I'll just build it as close to the collection mechanism as possible. We'll build a beacon out here, and that will probably be as close as we can get. Okay, that is that is actually pretty close to insta-mining. That is pretty close to insta-mining. Okay, yeah, let's let's run along the walls like that. Fantastic. I didn't think that would be possible, because <laughs> haste to mining only typically applies to stone, but with the additional boost of conduit power, I think we're actually mining really fast. Yeah, there we go. The ocean monument is filling back up again. Return to the ocean. I think I, think I am still going to have to worry about the guardians in a second or two, which hopefully... Yeah, I think if we had another beacon over here giving me resistance and regeneration as well, I think that would be preferable. But for now, we'll just have to do our best to avoid them where we can. Obviously, the problem with this approach is it does require us to be able to stand on the ground. I can't insta-mine while swimming, so that's a concern. But aside from that, this is all proceeding a lot smoother than I had hoped, so this is, this is very, very good. I think by moving around the monument, taking out all of this prismarine, I'm constantly on the move, which means guardians aren't really planning on shooting me anytime soon. But you can already tell how fast the spawning is going to be in here just by the little groups of them that appear as we travel around the room. There's a whole bunch of them just spawned in. And now we know that this works, it might even be better to work from the top down as long as we can step around some of the outside of the ocean monument and avoid these guardians. <laughs> We're going to be breaking a lot of kelp from this as well. We are getting a whole lot of kelp right now. And the more of these blocks we break, the more we leave ourselves exposed to attack from the guardians which is a problem. Every now and then I get on a good streak like this where I can kind of sprint and swim and because I'm making contact with the floor I can insta mine and it works so well and then one of these guardians decides to laser me from a distance and messes the whole thing up. Well so far this has been difficult but not as difficult as I thought it would be. The, if you look down here 
there are so many guardians just kind of chilling <laughs> at the bottom of the ocean. They tend to sink down to the bottom when they're not doing all that much. And that is good for me because that means that <laughs> I can get rid of the rest of the ruin here with very little fuss. Now, I've got the F3 debug screen open because I'm keeping the closest eye on where it says targeted fluid on the right hand side. It says water falling false. That is good because falling water means it cannot hold a bubble column. If the falling water is true, that means that we have a problem. Thankfully, all of the water sources in here seem to have reformed okay. It's an absolute miracle as far as I'm concerned because I honestly didn't think water physics in Minecraft were going to be reliable enough to be counted on like that. But I think, I think we're actually doing this, <laughs> which is incredible. And so far I've managed to do it, fingers crossed, don't want to jinx it, without dying once to these guys. As you can probably tell though, I am chewing through steak like nobody's business. And even if we did have some falling water around here, even if the falling water value was true for a few of these, all we would have to do would be to throw down some of this enormous amount of kelp to turn some of the water sources into solid ones, much the same as we've done in previous episodes when we've set up some salt sand bubble columns. I'm amazed and I'm delighted that we're actually going to be able to pull this off. I can't believe it's taken this long, but we are almost finished, folks. We have the entire monument, apart from these pillars, taken care of, and those pillars are to be honest, the easiest part, because all we need to do is just dodge around them to avoid getting shot by the Guardians. But man, the Conduit and Haste 2 thing really came through for us. That was that was pretty incredible. I'm so happy I was able to just instamine most of this thing out. It would have taken ages otherwise. And let me remind you, still only one death. Still undefeated, except by my own doing, I guess. Right, uh, one thing I, I meant to do... And it's something that people reminded me of in the comments of yesterday's episode, actually, that has just gone out, so now I'm being able to read the comments, is that the XP stored in these furnaces could actually go some way to mending the tools and weapons and stuff that we have there. I think it was mainly because I had that crisis where my elytra broke and I needed to kill a couple of guardians. The XP stored in the furnaces is going to help us mend the armor, which has taken an absolute beating thanks to the guardians. I'm surprised it's only come down this much, but oh boy, yeah, we, we really needed to have this armor on us. Um, let's see how much this does. There we go, a little bit of extra XP. Some of that will have gone to the armor, some of it will have gone to the pickaxe. I haven't smelted like tons and tons of stuff in this, but yeah, having eight furnaces all smelting XP from glass and storing that XP in there means that hopefully we will be able to restore some of my tools. I've actually just been back to mend my fortune pickaxe and now we're working on the silk touch one as well. But having a little bit of extra XP on this stuff is going to heal it up nicely, I think. And I shouldn't need these furnaces for anything else now, so we can probably just take those down in the long run. But maybe we'll need... I think we'll add a little bit more glass down here to make it look a little bit more fancy in the long term. But now we've just got to get rid of these pillars. The pillars are the final obstacle in the way of us placing all of the soul sand down here. The problem with that now is that the entire ocean floor is made out of gravel. So I'm probably going to take off the top layer of gravel and then find a way to replace the soul sand area that we're going to mark out from below instead of from above so we can just go down there into a cave, break a block at a time, place a soul sand at a time. It's going to be tedious, but it means we basically avoid doing anything involving these guardians, because I want them out of my life at this point. I want them into a killing mechanism so that I can fry them and get all the lovely drops without having to worry about messing with them on the surface here. But the cool thing is the mob cap for this area means that if a bunch of them generate over in this corner, because that's kind of near to where I'm hanging out, as I swim around, it's going to mean fewer generate in the opposite corner. So I should be able to sneak over here and get rid of some of these without having too much hassle from the other guardians. And oh boy, is it nice to have that haste and conduit combination when we're taking care of these pillars, because all I need to do is just core them like apples and we'll be good to go here. And just like that, the temple is gone. <laughs> well, I say just like that, it's actually taken me hours to get that thing done, but it's done, amazing. I'm so happy with this. And now all we need to do is take out this stone floor and put in the soul sand and everything should be more or less good to go. 
It's amazing to think that we've <laughs> I've spent so much time on this project and it is almost at an end. Now we need to do the same thing with the stone floor in here, take it out completely and make sure that the water in there is not falling water anymore, which it shouldn't be if we've opened out the corners like that. Yeah, okay, you've got to make sure that you take out the block on the corner so that water sources can start to form again. But this should be relatively straightforward compared to the temple itself because the guardians aren't up here yet. A few of them might start to spot me as we continue this process, but it really shouldn't take all that long. And let's take out that corner block as well. That guy there, yeah, just to make sure that the water sources can form up where they need to. But look at this. This is the technique I've been using to get rid of all of the prismarine blocks from the temple. And all you really need to do is get down into a swimming position like this. So you're sprinting, but make sure you're making contact with the floor. You shouldn't return to the upright position. Even if you stop swimming in Java, I think it works a little bit differently in Bedrock. But then all we need to do is hold down left click, strafe left and absolutely trash all the terrain in front of us. And you can do that more or less three blocks at a time in a row like that. I think if you go to four, then you occasionally miss blocks, but that's a very, very quick way of getting rid of all of this. And we're done. Just look at the amount of cobblestone floating around here. I'm collecting a little bit of it as I go, but the rest of it can despawn. It's fine. Stone comes out of the ground. It's nice and easy to collect. Last thing we want to do is take down the conduit itself. And yeah, there's occasionally a bit of a glitch that happens when you're speed mining this stuff with the conduit power as well. But the conduit we need to pack up and we definitely need to make sure that we take this with us because it's a pretty expensive block. Don't want to be losing this one. There we go. Did we pick that up? Nope, it floated up to the surface. Okay, we got it, good. I have really wanted to make sure that that one didn't end up in the water streams, although most of the stuff is just floating up to the surface. It's not actually hitting the water streams at all because it would have to have enough momentum to go through those fence gates, which the Guardians will have once we install the soul sand, which is going to be the next step of this whole venture and potentially one of the trickier parts since, like I said, Guardians do tend to come to rest on the bottom of the ocean floor. So what we're gonna do is dive down here, actually might set up the conduit in a different place, just slightly out of the way so we still have that water breathing effect or maybe just take a water breathing potion. But we're gonna need to dig out the entire ocean floor in that kind of perimeter, remove all of the gravel and see if we can get the soul sand in from below to avoid contact with the guardians as much as possible. Okay, the conduit has been set back up. Let's dig some gravel, shall we? <laughs> this is gonna be a bit of an experience, but I think we should be able to get through it okay. And yes, underneath the ocean floor, we have a layer of other stone types that aren't gravel, that won't be affected by gravity, therefore should be nice and easy for us to remove from below. That's the perimeter border dug out. And before we go ahead and place some of the soul sand, I am gonna install a bit of a fail safe in the kill mechanism. See, if we drop them through lava, they'll all end up at the bottom of this shaft here. And then once we've started placing the soul sand, tons of guardians are gonna be coming through the system constantly. And I don't want to like lag out or crash my client dealing with these guys. So I'm probably going to put in some lava that we can activate using a dispenser, meaning that whenever we want to switch the system off, the guardians will just die in the lava instead of hanging around waiting to be killed in the kill mechanism. So I think we need to go and grab a few extra things because I will need two dispensers for this. Okay, down here in the kill mechanism chamber, we have a dispenser we can put in this wall here, and that's going to control whether or not the water is flowing out of here. And there we go, with a button attached to that block, we can power the dispenser anytime we want, having it dispense the water, and then we just need to hit that button again to retract the water back into the dispenser. We're gonna do that on the opposite side here with lava in this dispenser. And the reason I wanna have it controlled manually like this instead of on a redstone circuit is because lava and water flowing at different speeds means that sometimes they might form either obsidian or cobblestone in here, and we kind of want to avoid both instances of that. So there we go, we have the lava spilling out right now. We just hit that button again to retract the lava back into the bucket, and then we can wait for the lava to disappear when the light goes off, activate the water, and that's when the guardians can come down. So we have a bit of a fail safe going on here for now. I think I will probably leave it with the lava out for the moment, just to make sure that the guardians, anyone, any guardians that come down here will just fall straight into this lava and die. Thinking about it, while we're here, we probably better set up the hoppers underneath this to catch any of the drops once we start killing them because it's going to be a bit difficult to do that when there are guardians raining down on our heads. Okay, we've now got a floor of hoppers underneath there so when the water is on and we're killing guardians with our sword it's just going to drop them right into this chest which will then come through into that one thanks to the hopper underneath. And we're going to install a big storage system here eventually but that's just getting the output from this chest nice and early so that we don't have to worry about that once the system is up and running. And now with that failsafe installed, I think it is time to 
<laughs> begin Operation Soul Sand and to give this a test. This is the moment of truth. This is the moment where we determine whether or not this farm will succeed or fail. I probably still need to add a roof on top of this thing, actually, thinking about it, because there are going to be a lot of guardians popping up in the water streams, and we want to make sure that they don't go any higher. In addition to that, I believe the way guardian spawning mechanics work is that if they are exposed to the sky, which they kind of are, there are fence gates in between, but those aren't the type of block that will block sky light, there is less of a chance for guardians to spawn. So believe it or not, this right here is minimal spawning. <laughs> we'll see what it's like when this thing is cranked up to the max but for that we will need to put a roof on this thing and likewise we'll need to put a roof on top of here as well because I feel like anything that gets caught in these streams and wants to swim around a bit might find its way out of here by flopping around somewhat so we will do our best to get rid of that element as well by covering this over but I think this should all work. I think I've set this thing up okay. And at this point, we should be turning particles to minimal <laughs> because that is one of the ways, where is it, in animations? Yeah, this is one of the ways that it is possible to reduce the frame drops that you get from looking at a lot of bubble columns. And we are gonna be placing a lot of bubble columns. Like I said, this is probably going to be in the region of about 3000 soul sand or possibly even more. We're doing the maximum area we possibly can for this farm, so yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a pain <laughs> to deal with all the particles. And <laughs> I'm occasionally squishing these guardians down underneath here, which I find quite amusing. And when we come up to the surface for air, we can actually see the farm starting to work. Now it's not gonna work 100% until we have water columns going all the way up to the surface because part of what makes this farm so great is the bubbles bounce the guardians up into the water streams constantly. Having this entire area floored with bubble columns is basically the only way it's going to work. Otherwise, they will just swim back down. But we've got the perimeter done now, so <laughs> now it's just a matter of doing all of the stuff in the middle. It's gonna be tricky, but it's gonna be worth it. And after all that time, the payoff is sweet. Look at this, the Guardians are coming in. They are bottlenecking a little bit over there, but that's actually not too bad because once we get a roof on this thing, the spawn rates are going to be pretty impressive, I gotta say. Now let's hop down here and actually kill some of these guys for once because they have been wrecking my tools, my armor. I actually went back to the XP farm and repaired my armor earlier, but we're gonna have to do something about them being able to hit me down here. That's not gonna be ideal. And of course, thanks to the way guardians work, they actually have that thorns ability, which means killing them like this is not going to be like super great for our armor still, but the amount of XP we're gonna get from this and the amount of drops we're gonna get from this will be reward enough, I think. Now let's stand here and repair my shovel. Oh yes, there we go. The armor's already healed. The shovel is going right up as well. Fantastic. The XP just keeps flowing <laughs> and that's awesome. That's so, so good. And we need to improve this a little bit so the XP can flow out of somewhere other than just the sides. And having the regeneration beacon here might actually be a requirement. So we might need to get another beacon because you take, you take so much damage with this. It's going to be nice having an actual regeneration effect here constantly so we don't have to worry too much about this. But they're spawning in and falling down here faster than I can kill them at times, which is fantastic. That's so, so good to have this kind of XP farm, this kind of loot drop farm. And yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna need to implement some kind of better storage system for all of this, I think. But that's gonna have to wait until the next episode, I expect. In the meantime, I'm gonna make a couple of changes to this off camera, probably do something about that bottleneck where the Guardians were having trouble getting through the system just to make things a little bit more efficient, a little bit faster. Yeah, this thing, <laughs> this thing is really cranking. Let's take a quick look at the stats and see quite how many soul sand I had to place. Let's see, times dropped, times used. Here we go, soul sand must be pretty high up the list at this point. There we go, 3,341 soul sand. That's probably not the exact number, but it's pretty close. <laughs> That's kind of absurd. We have mined 9,000 prismarine bricks, 7,000 regular prismarine, probably some dark prismarine and some sea lanterns quite high up on this list. There you go, 473 dark prismarine. Sea lanterns must be down here somewhere as well. We've done a whole lot to this ocean monument. The conduit is still set up here as well, and the guardians have actually been dying whenever they get close, which is why we have a couple of prismarine shards and stuff around here. Now the next stage of this farm is, I mean there are a couple of stages, we've got to do something about the the collection mechanism for all of the drops. We should probably put some kind of case around the outside to make sure that guardians don't fly out from the bubble columns and just end up outside here like they seem to be doing around the conduit right now. 
And yeah, I think that's probably it. There might be a couple that still spawn outside of the bounding box because I'm pretty sure the bounding box of an ocean monument is still a few blocks wider than what we have here. But even so, it seems like the majority of them are ending up in the system, which is fantastic. And thanks again to Cubfan135 for a fantastic Guardian farm design. I'm going to put a roof on this thing, I think, off camera. We're going to do a few adjustments to it. But that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching this Guardian Farm 2 parter. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.